Hi, it's Allison from Mahalo.com. I want to show you an example of using a theorem to find the greatest common factor or at least common multiple of two numbers. There's a theorem that says the greatest common factor times the least common multiple is equal to the product of the numbers itself. So we're going to use that and see what we can find out. Let's look at the numbers 36 and 56. So the first thing I'm going to do is find their prime factorization. 36 is 4 times 9, and that factors into 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. So I have 2 squared times 3 squared. Okay, and 56 factors into 7 times 8, and 8, of course, is 2 times 4. So the prime factorization here is 2 cubed times 7. Okay, so let's say I want to find the least common multiple. But, you know, it might be easier to find the greatest common factor. So let's find that first and then use our theorem to find the least common multiple. The greatest common factor is just whatever they have in common in their two prime factorizations. So they both have a 2, a factor of 2 in common, and there's a factor of 2 squared, so that's good. We'll take that. So um, that's really it, isn't it? They don't have anything else in common. So the greatest common factor of these two numbers is 2 squared. So we're going to use our theorem to now find the least common multiple. Now I know that the greatest common factor times the least common multiple is equal to the product of the numbers themselves. That means that the least common multiple will be equal to the product of the two numbers divided by the greatest common factor. Okay, so my two numbers were 36 and 56, and my greatest common factor was 2 times 2, which is just 4. Now, instead of uh, doing this, this multiplication of 36 times 56, I'm going to do a little canceling because it's easier. 4 goes into 36 9 times. So the least common multiple is 9 times 56. And when I multiply 9 times 56, I get 504. So by using this theorem, I was able to find the greatest common factor, which was a small number, 4 and then divide that into the product of the two numbers, and that gives me the least common multiple, which is probably a little easier than having to go about finding the least common multiple since it's a bigger number. So that's how this theorem can be really useful when you're doing this kind of problem. Give it a try. I think you'll like it. Thanks for learning with me today. If you want more information on any of the topics, click on any of the links below. And if you liked our videos, please subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. If you have a specific request, send it to requests at mahalo.com, and I'll see you next time.